It's so cold. It's winter in South Africa. There's no insulation. There's no central heat. <sighs> Looks like I'll just have to rely on some hot news to keep me warm today. Reese, how are we coming on that jingle? All right, uh, fine. Next time then? Great. So it feels like just yesterday we had gotten more information on the next gen NVIDIA and AMD GPUs because it actually was yesterday. But apparently, just like I said yesterday, the more people you put on a boat, the more GPU leaks you get. The leaks will likely start to become more vociferous and incessant. And I know that we've delved into this quite a bit, so let's start with the most credible, confirmed by AMD themselves, down to the most ridiculous. So first up, Navi will not have multiple GPUs. In an interview with PC Games and the senior vice president of Radeon Technologies Group, David Wong, stated that we ain't getting no stinking multi-chip module on Navi. Okay, he didn't say it like that. The actual quote goes, we're looking at the MCM type of approach, MCM meaning multi-chip module, but we've yet to conclude that this is something that can be used for traditional gaming graphics type of application. So this is in direct contradiction to the hopes and aspirations of the many gamers who wanted to see an Infinity Fabric type setup on the next gen AMD graphics cards. We even report this as being a possibility, especially since the previous head of RTG, Raja Kadori, mentioned that the use of Infinity Fabric would be great for future GPU releases. So it wasn't a baseless aspiration, but it appears that AMD is putting the kibosh on this now at least for right this moment. The statement of we've yet to conclude obviously leaves the door open for them to change the design of future GPUs or to update Navi once they figure out how to make it work well for gaming. But for now, we shouldn't get our hopes up. And then lower on the trustworthiness totem pole, Turing will have HDMI 2.1 and hot clocks. So this rumor is yet again coming from Igor over at Tom's Hardware Germany, and he's proven to be a pretty decent source of leaks over the years. However, these details come from his interaction on the 3D Center forum and not an actual article on Tom's Hardware. It appears that Nvidia is working on a new kind of very specific video output. The idea is that HDMI 2.1 display standard is what we'll be getting. HDMI 2.1, in case you're not familiar, has support for up to 8K 60fps and 4K 120 uncompressed with variable refresh rate and dynamic HDR baked in. And then in another posting on the forum, Eagler also gave indication that the way clocks will be handled on Turing will be different than what we've seen on Maxwell or Pascal with the reintroduction of something akin to hot clocks that we saw on Fermi. The writer at 3D Center bases some of his speculation off of what we saw with Fermi where the shader clock would often be double the speed of the core clock. So if Turing is anything like Pascal and hitting two gigahertz on the core is no problem, then we could likely speculate that we could see up to four gigahertz on the shader clock side of things. The writer does note that it doesn't have to be a direct doubling and that it likely won't be the same thing as what we had on Fermi, but dreaming of four gigahertz is pretty nice. The largest takeaway from this is that Turing will likely have more minute control of performance with the next generation of GPU boost controlling more than just the core clock to allow for better dynamic performance. Whether or not that's actually going to be shader clocks that we can adjust has yet to be seen and whether or not it's going to be 4 gigahertz is likely still a rumor. And then the folks over at WCCF Tech also seem to believe that Nvidia's ray tracing RTX tech will be baked in at the hardware level. That seems to be a pretty obvious move considering how much NVIDIA has pushed this at their events. However, just like Jensen noted at Computex, it's going to take a long while until consumer GPUs can accomplish the Star Wars demo that they've been showing off. But having some supplementary ray tracing in games could help add a extra smidgen of immersion that was, you know, previously unattainable. Ooh, I wonder if they're going to be baking it into Cyberpunk 2077. So now to move even lower down the truthiness meter, RX 680 will compete with 1080 and 1080 Ti. So when I say truthiness meter, I'm not saying it's not possible or shouldn't be considered, but rather just considering how much credence we should give to the reports that we're discussing. So over on Tweak Town, we have a report that the RX 680 will cost between $299 and $399 and battle the 1080 Ti at higher resolution games thanks to the GDDR6. All of that sounds great, but color me a 
bit skeptical based on other reports that we've been getting about AMD's attempted positioning in the market. Even in the hot news segment I did yesterday, it makes a ton of sense why Lisa Su doesn't want AMD competing in the high-end GPU space, and a move like this would be a bit odd. Not impossible, just odd. Even the Tweaktown article mentions the double-sidedness of the report, saying that, quote, another source said that it would not be that great in the way that it would not be a successor to Radeon RX Vega at first. So the pricing and the performance level that they're expecting out of the RX 680 seems a bit too high-end considering everything that I've heard behind the scenes. I could see it happening for higher end SKUs that they might release down the line, but I don't expect AMD to lead with this maneuver whenever they launch Navi. But I also want to hear what you all think about this in the comments below. This is one that I could go either way on. It's possible, just not likely given what I've heard, so I want to discuss it with y'all. Then lastly, the one that I'm going to cry complete bullcrap on, GTX 1180 will cost $1,500. So this seems to be a resurgence of a rumor that debuted back in the March timeframe when we knew significantly less about what NVIDIA was planning on releasing, and a lot of you even mentioned this in the comments on yesterday's hot news. And this rumor smelled like crap back then, just like it does now. From every company I've talked to, yes, we're expecting a price increase on the 1180, but not to the tune of over double what the current 1080 Ti is going for. There won't be enough justification for that in either performance or cost of parts to build the GPU. It's absolute hogwash, and I won't believe it for a second. Now, if we're talking about a Turing-based Titan that replaces the Titan XP, I could see NVIDIA maybe bumping the price up $300 there, but for the flagship consumer card, I say nay. And then in even more depressing news, there's a new Intel CPU vulnerability. So in case you thought the days of discovering issues with Intel CPUs was over, you might want to see if you've been dreaming. Intel released a re new report on a vulnerability that utilizes the lazy FP state restore technique on their core base CPUs. I won't pretend like we know enough about the severity of the exploit or the technique used to make this vulnerability work, but we just wanted to pitch this out there in case you need to patch your setup for it which likely isn't going to be the case if you're not running in some sort of cloud computing server environment. And then in even more depressing news, Steam is dropping Windows XP and Vista support. So this move really sucks. It's so stupid. I can't believe Steam would be removing support for the most popular operating system of all time. Don't they know my grandma Ilva is still rocking Windows Vista? I mean, get rid of XP for all I care, but don't take away my games on Vista! Cold-hearted Valve at it yet again! But seriously, if you're still on either one of these OS's, the Steam client will no longer work after January 1st, 2019. So you have a bit of time to change over, but I can wholeheartedly understand if you want to stay where you are. Vista was the real MVP. And then speaking of Windows spyware, Google Pixelbook may soon be shipping with Windows 10. So for all 15 of you out there that bought a $1,000 Pixelbook and immediately regretted it because Chrome OS is trash, you'll likely be relieved to hear that Google is apparently working on getting certification for booting Windows 10 on their overpriced web browsing machines. It's unclear whether Google wants to start shipping these so they can natively run Windows 10 out of the box, or if they're trying to get it so you don't have to run over to XDA to try to figure out how to root the machines to get Windows working. But the move is one that I can definitely appreciate. And then in more quantum technology news that no one understands except for that one guy in the comments who's going to write a dissertation about it, scientists have created the first on-demand entanglement link. So it looks like researchers at Qtech, that's Q-U-Tech, have succeeded in generating quantum entanglement between two quantum chips faster than the entanglement is lost. What that technically means? I've got no idea. However, the implications are quite massive as it's a major step towards developing an actual quantum network where information could be sent completely anonymously and at speeds that are faster than the speed of light because science. And then in today's segment of not cool, bro, we have Sony's response to the Fortnite account issue for the Switch. So Sony said, and I quote, we're always open to hearing what the PlayStation community is interested in to enhance their gaming experience. Fortnite is already a huge hit with PS4 fans, offering a true free-to-play experience so gamers can jump in and play online. With 79 million PS4s sold around the world and more than 80 million monthly active users on PlayStation Network, 
we've built a huge community of gamers who can play together on Fortnite and all online titles. We also offer Fortnite crossplay support with PC, Mac, iOS, and Android devices, expanding the opportunity for Fortnite fans on PS4 to play with even more gamers on other platforms. So they basically dodged the issue and then said, look at how amazing we've already been to you. Appreciate our efforts. Not cool, Sony. Say you'll fix it and then let's move on. You're the one holding back people from transferring their accounts to Fortnite on Switch, so just don't be turds and resolve it. Don't ask us to thank you for how we can cross-play on platforms that we're not talking about right now. Not cool, bro. And that's going to wrap it up for today's episode of Hot News. Let me know what you thought about anything we talked about today down in the comments down below. I really want to hear from all of you. Also, be sure to let me know if there's any news piece I missed so I can cover it in tomorrow's episode. And then don't forget to smash that like button, get subscribed, and tell me how beautiful I am so that you can stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. I am Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see your smiling faces again later. Cheerio.